brainstorming, we, we talked about what if, what if we actually thought about a show that could be both an art show and a show that would be at a science museum. So you've got text and then you also have interactive elements so that the audience can possibly be a part of what it feels like to collaborate as artists and scientists together, knowing that all those artists aren't visual artists. There's a poet, there's a composer, there's a choreographer, and we all work in very different ways. Um, what is it like to collaborate with someone that you perceive as very different um, and, and then bring the audience into that experience so that they get a small part of, of what that experience is like. Each summer for the last three years, four scientists, four artists, and a documentary filmmaker have retreated to the remote landscape of Ucross, Wyoming. Outside of their offices and freed from the restrictions of their disciplines, they have formed ongoing and fluid relationships that inspire research, blur disciplines, and encourage new thought. You know, there are nine of us. We were all paired together for the initial um, year one, and then the second year we actually had um, new pairings. And then in between those years, I think we all spoke to each other about even more projects. So then there were pairings that weren't chosen for us, but that we chose ourselves. Um, and projects, I think, still that we haven't created yet that um, that I would still like to see happen. Inspiration through collaboration. The success of their efforts can perhaps be attributed to the power of play. Yeah, how many other performances would be giving clinker? I know. <laughs> it was fun to think about um, this exhibition encompassing all of these um, collaborations and how that could happen without being too completely overwhelming. So there needed to be some consistency um, within the exhibition in terms of visual elements, materials, woods that we would use in everything, furniture, just overall materials, plexiglass and paper and things that could be inserted in each piece that would then give it a visual cohesion. Um, so as you walked around the room, it looked like one show done by possibly one person because I think in my own experience from being a part of these collaborations is that that's how it feels when we're all together is we feel it feels like one project even though we're all doing our separate things. Poet Harvey Hicks and microbiologist Naomi Ward contributed microbe inspired poetry and large scale displays of their microbial inspirations their welcome to the micro bestiary encourages gallery attendees to play using magnets to invent new scientific names and finishing poems based on the microbes. Other cross pollinators were inspired by the works of Hicks and Ward and Guzzo composed music to represent the behavior of microbes. She entitled this Carnival of the Microbes. Sculptor Ashley Hope Carlisle's budding discovery sculpture uses the play of light and shadow to celebrate the microbial form. Composer Anne Gutzow and geologist Ron Frost focused on the natural landscape's larger forms, presenting Rock Show. This collection of collaborative works features an aria entitled Clinker, Powder River Aria. The aria's libretto is written entirely in geologic language. I love it. A rock display depicts the evolution of the Powder River Basin to viewers in a visual, audible, and kinesthetic manner and encourages participation. A collaboration between the composer Ann Gutzow and rangeland ecologist Ann Hild yielded Hearing the Prairie. Using etched tiles, a toy piano, and punch strips in a hand-cranked music box, Viewers connect with obvious as well as hidden plants in the surrounding Ucross landscape, perhaps seeing patterns they may never have realized. This one had to be like that one. Yeah, turn it over and you'll see. It should say which photo it was. Leafy Spurge, an invasive exotic form or flower. It is predominantly yellow-green in color. 
You can hear they're rather repetitive. So this and one was that one? That was the one on the right. In Carlisle and Hild's Ode to Shrub, viewers arrange shrub magnets and write on laser-cut roots in order to connect with the importance of shrubs to prairies near Ucross. To Be or Not to Be features the collaboration between choreographer Rachel Shaw and physical ecologist Michael Dillon. It repurposes choreographic notation as a tool to describe the qualitative movements of bees. Participants interpret the Le Bon symbols and follow two movement paths, personally feeling the difference between a healthy and a sick bee. Entomologist turned philosopher Jeff Lockwood contributed friend or foe, allowing viewers to link super magnified, sculpted, anatomical insect parts to their biological function. This part of the power of play exhibit blurs the line between love and war, both necessary activities in the insect's fight for survival. Michael Dillon and Ashley Carlisle's Fuzzy sprouted at UCROSS. It received a National Science Foundation research grant in 2015 and is scheduled to be a complete interactive bumblebee sculpture in 2017. Using dinner table reflections from the UCROSS residency, Ali Grossman crafted The Table as Setting, an exhibit that allows viewers to sit at the dinner table, hear snippets of the conversation, and take part in transdisciplinary metamorphosis by writing their thoughts and answers to proposed questions on placemats. This part of the exhibit continues the discussion and encourages further play. Cross-pollination of art and science. We encourage you to come, listen, participate, play.